72% of dwellings today are houses, 14% are apartments, and 12% are terrace homes or townhomes. And of course, uh, they are ultimately the most undersupplied product of the big three. They are in the shortest amount of current supply. Welcome to the Urban Property Investor. I'm your host, Sam Saggers, here to help you crack the code of real estate wealth. Today's show, how to make townhouse investments stack up, make sense, and make your money. Uh, should be a good show because I'm a big fan of the old townhouse investment. Yes, am I the only property person that loves townhouses? I tell you what, I've made a lot of money over the years out of townhouses and I'm continuing that trend. There is a bit of a secret sauce to making sure townhouses stack up and make money. And I want to talk to you a little bit about what that looks like today. So welcome back to the show, regulars. Uh, Play the program in double speed. Get your life back. You know the rules. And of course, if it's your first time tuning into the show, Past episodes I've done are actually lessons on real estate, so feel free to dart about, go and check out some past episodes if that rocks your boat. But I tell you what, the year's getting by, isn't it? It's almost uh, the jolly season, the crazy season. Uh, It feels like the Christmas party invites are are flying around at the moment, so uh, I tell you what, uh, Christmas, New Year's, uh, January... You start to, I don't know, turn into a little fat sausage, don't you? You just start to drink too much and be too cheerful. But uh, I'm ready for it this year. I'm ready to be a fat little sausage because it's been quite the year. But this year, I've made money out of real estate and I added a new property to my portfolio and it was a townhome, a townhouse. And so I thought I would talk to you a little bit about investing in townhouses because uh, they are a great little asset class, a great little typology, but certainly not all townhouses make people money. So I've used a strategy over the years to successfully invest in townhomes. Basically, you take a terrace home or a townhome, you apply a fixed or finite level of supply around that townhome by investing in a suburban, typical middle ring neighborhood, a functional suburban neighborhood, and you add what is known as the third place for profit. So townhouse, middle ring, third place equals profit. Now, I've used this strategy in the past and one deal in particular that I own today stands out as a cracker. When I look at the combined results per annum of applying the rental return and the capital growth rate, the total return on the asset per annum since ownership is around 13% per annum. Now, there's not too many investments in the marketplace that spit back 13% per annum, but uh, my little townhome has done exactly that. And uh, I first applied the logic of jumping into the townhome market when Sydney and uh, the more, I guess, better suburbs of Sydney started to get priced out from a housing perspective. And of course, uh, one concept behind terrace homes or townhomes is if the house price, the delta between a townhome and a house is far apart and you get the same uh, infrastructure amenities nearby to what the housing market has got in those suburbs. 
well, you could just do very, very well off the back of buying a townhome investment. And of course, uh, when Sydney prices in the middle suburban ring started to get over $2 million, uh, really, what choice do you have? You can push further and further out to the urban edge, or you can investigate the idea of buying a terrace or town home. So what is a town home? I guess it's a good place to start the conversation. Town homes are, are typically attached to one another. Uh, you basically can have sort of two forms of town homes. You can have a terrace house, which is uh, its own title. It doesn't have any strata uh, connectivity or the exact opposite, but looking exactly the same is a townhome, which is a titula, uh, uh, essentially attached to a, a unit scheme or a strata scheme. Now, townhomes, obviously, uh, most people can visualize what they are or terrace homes. They're just simply uh, multi-level properties whereby you've got your own private entrance and quite often you'll have your own private little small courtyard attached to the home. And of course, there are shared walls. Uh, there is limited outdoor space and uh, quite often many townhomes are managed in a uh, strata titled scheme. And so uh, townhomes come in all shapes and sizes, but they are becoming a very popular choice with a range of both renters, buyers, first home buyers, small families, empty nesters, and of course, individuals looking for a bit of a low maintenance alternative to single family homes. And so they kind of offer this balance between an apartment and a house. They offer balance between space and privacy. They offer balance between uh, living in a community scheme with people around you who you can get to know and, of course, uh, help with, you know, security and things like that, um, which is just a balance. And I know with the property whereby I've done very, very well out of the Sydney property market um, from a townhome, which has risen by $1.5 million since purchase, the formula there was a great community. People love living there. They love going over to the next door neighbor's townhome for a little barbecue and, um, yeah, get sending their kids over, four townhouses over for a bit of a play date, so to speak. So townhomes, uh, if done right, can actually be a very great product and they are really a model whereby Yimbies really want this product to make a bit of a comeback. The Yimby, of course, is the yes in my backyard movement and uh, they're very vocal about the fact that for the issue of solving affordability, of creating beautiful family little places together and for neighbours to meet each other, really one of the best forms of housing has typically been the terrace or the town home. And if you think about the history of town homes and terrace homes, some of our earliest real estate architecture type was the Victorian terrace home. And uh, you don't have to go you know, too far out of the inner city of places like Sydney and Melbourne to, to see just how popular they are and how expensive they have come. So there is a lot of existing evidence that if you get the terrace or townhome right, you're going to make money. And of course, I've done, recently done an episode on the Paddington effect, but Paddington in Sydney, which is an inner city suburb, is a great proof of concept of townhomes doing very, very well, albeit they're architecturally inspired terraces. They've got their own private entrance. They're typically double, sometimes even triple story. They've got small courtyards um, and they're 
designed in a way where they engage with the street. And of course, um, if we go back and we look at the performance of these great little terrace products in Paddington, there is evidence to show that they are actually the most expensive real estate in Australia when you base it on a per square meter rate. Uh, Same in Melbourne. If you go to East Melbourne, it is actually the most expensive suburb in Victoria. Turak is the most expensive by price. East Melbourne, the most expensive by square meter rate. In other words, people will pay a lot of money for a smaller home and there is evidence that it works. And of course, if we were to look into Paddington, what is the secret source of Paddington? Well, one, it's obviously got beautiful housing, architecturally inspired terrace homes. It's got very green, leafy streets. It's got a great local business culture, it's got a great local arts culture, cafe culture, and it's got a lot of green space with the idea that Centennial Park is one of Sydney's biggest parks, probably its best park, literally uh, on the edge of Paddington. And so if we go back to how I made a $1.5 million out of real estate, uh, townhouse real estate, I simply followed the model which is in evidence in Paddington. You take a good quality townhome, you apply it to a functional suburban suburb and add green space. And of course, if you go to Paddington, you've got a very, very functional suburb, you've got a beautiful terrace design and you've got a lot of green space. So that that's the model. That's the model that works. And of course, uh, townhomes different, differ in sizes. And they also differ, differ in architectural appeal. And of course, there are a lot of townhomes that come to market, which I would refer to as a market lemon. They are not the type of townhome I'm talking about. They do not have the winning formula of uh, tight supply and or great green space nearby and they are fundamentally flawed assets now i've seen a lot of these be produced in just simply the wrong areas of late so you do have different sizes of townhomes and when you start to get larger townhomes over 165 square meters internally you do start to link the home to the housing market. When you get smaller townhomes, uh, some townhomes are like 85 square metres. Really, they're a double-storey apartment almost and are far more in keeping with the apartment growth rates. So when you're analysing a townhome, you kind of can split them in two, house-like or apartment-like townhomes. Now, again, uh, there may be no right or wrong to that formula. It's just understanding that uh, townhomes, if they do connect with the housing market, obviously will get a housing market-like response. The most recent townhome I've bought followed the exact same formula I'm talking about. Functional, middle ring, suburban neighbourhood, tightly held on supply, lots of beautiful green space and a very nice functional townhome which was well designed. In fact, the townhome I acquired was a four-bedroom, three-storey, four-car townhome. And since I purchased it, pre-construction, the price has moved some $250,000. So I'm up about a quarter of a million dollars using the same formula, but this time in Brisbane that I used in Sydney to make $1.5 million. So of course, uh, when it comes to the idea of perhaps selecting a a townhome to add to your portfolio, 
they do link to where society is headed. Uh, townhomes, obviously, uh, particularly the modern ones, have adaptable and flexible use. There's a lot of technology that's future-proofing the asset into tomorrow. And, of course, uh, modern townhomes today are very energy efficient and resilient for the future. And, of course, from a spatial conversation, if we can get the right townhouse in a housing market, which is too expensive for us to invest in, there is some great logic to what that looks like. And uh, I guess when I start to analyze where to make money out of real estate into the future, you know, there's quite often conversations around what is the next hotspot? And I actually think one uh, alternative way to, to discuss the conversation around where to make money is what is the next hot dwelling type? And for me, it does uh, seem that townhomes are going to do very, very well. Now, our household composition in Australia is diminishing. There are less people living in homes. There are less larger families out in society. And if you analyse the 2021 census, there is now... 2.5 2.5 people per household. So knowing that there's sort of 2.5 people per household, we can see that maybe the traditional larger home, larger backyard, it's still going to be a thing. People love that. Uh, but an alternative to perhaps to live a little bit closer to the city, to be nearer the better infrastructure is townhomes or terrace homes, either or. Uh, Terrace homes are simply individual titled, townhomes are strata titled. There's no right or wrong. Um, You know, if you can uh, find the right deal, it's it's gonna make money. And the formula is here. I'm giving you the formula of what to look for. And so um, if we look at the overall dwelling typology type of product in society based on the 2021 ABS census. 72% of dwellings today are houses, 14% are apartments, and 12% are terrace homes or townhomes. And of course, uh, they are ultimately the most undersupplied product of the big three. They are in the shortest amount of current supply. And they really do mirror, I guess, a 2.5 person household. Uh, If you've got a three bedroom or a four bedroom townhome, you are absolutely mirroring the household formation of today. Now, the home that went up $1.5 million, the t- townhome that I own in Sydney, is, is a three-bedroom townhome. And again, it's mirroring exactly where society is at. And if I analyse who lives in the townhome, it is 2.5 people. Yes, uh, two adults and a 0.5, a little kid. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that child, when I say little, is, is one year old. So the typology really works for a certain demographic of people. And, of course, one of the advantages is house-like stability. When you're in a predominantly housing market and you are a subclass of housing, you can get the stability of the housing market. You don't really get sort of wild velocity uh, of of issues with townhomes. They don't, you know, like, um, you know, that there's no, I guess, high density dramas. There's no um, liquidation issues with townhomes. They are a very liquid piece of real estate. They are not an illiquid piece of real estate. So 
The idea is we want to choose, obviously, a functional townhome, you know, decent size, decent architecture type, decent feel of asset. We want to kind of think, okay, well, the Paddington Terrace architecturally, a Victorian terrace, you know, they're expensive, like they're $3 million. And so it's going to be incredible very difficult to be able to afford that as a property investor, not impossible for some, but uh, certainly unaffordable as a product type. But we want to use common sense to go, okay, well, this is a really well-designed townhome and uh, we want to link it to what works in a place like Paddington. And if we think about what works, great natural environment, a very walkable and cyclable suburb, great street appeal and landscaping, great public spaces, great local businesses, ease of driving and parking uh, in the neighbourhood, believe it or not. Um, There's good public investment by local government. Um, The local housing is is good, uh, you know, in surrounding suburbs and there's a lot of meeting places for people to catch up and of course uh, there is just really good evidence of good council management of that local government area and so people will swap space for place and this is a key fundamental of acquiring a townhome space for place. So that means the place needs to also offer some lifestyle concepts for the townhome to work. In other words, you are offsetting the fact you don't have a large parcel of land with the ability to use the local suburb for its place uh, concepts. And of course, Really, today, uh, when we analyze the price of real estate, it is expensive. If we had a look at the ABS average pricing over the last 90 days, the average dwelling has risen by $25,000 to $912,000. Now, that's an average, not a median, but that's where Australian real estate sits today. And of course, uh, it's also less affordable than ever before to go and invest in the regions. If you look at Newcastle, Gosford, Port Macquarie, Coffs Harbour, Ballarat, Albury, Sunshine Coast, Toowoomba, Bunbury, Bustleton, they're all very, very expensive marketplaces today. And of course, uh, there are uh, cities in Australia where the median dwelling or midpoint of the uh, dwelling value is now huge. So if you took all of the dwellings and combined them, townhomes, apartments, and houses, Sydney's median dwelling value is 1.1 million. Melbourne, 775. Uh, Brisbane, 760. Adelaide, 691. And Perth, 618. So they're the cities with over a million people. So it makes sense to me if you start to analyze actually the median dwelling price, if you can get a really good townhome and it ticks the boxes and can reflect where the market center is, but you buy it in a suburb where houses are just much more expensive, you're going to make money. And uh, really, One thing that I coach in real estate is to understand the concept of the affordable and livable supply and demand gap. Today, there is real estate produced, which is really affordable, but people don't actually want to live there. Uh, There are places produced in society with affordable product type but no one actually aspires to want to go and live there. Uh, Then there's supply which is produced today, which is very, very expensive and unaffordable for people to actually buy. 
Uh, they're designed for basically people at a later lifestyle or life stage of their life to to buy. You know, two and three bedroom apartments in the multi millions in in urban areas. And so, if we can find the affordable stock in a highly livable area, we match what demand wants. Real estate is a demand led sport. Now, the most recent purchase I purchased, which I'm just just uh, just done, the townhome, which has inspired this show. Again, if I look where that real estate is located, it's located in a highly livable neighborhood, which is ultimately affordable. Certainly when I purchased, it was affordable. And now it's pressured its price movement and jumped up. But I would still say it's still affordable. But affordability is starting to disappear in that precinct. This is the game we play. As land runs out, land goes up. And of course, part of the model of buying a terrace or townhome is a diminishing level of supply. And so obviously, uh, when people make a decision to own real estate, they're making decisions on where are the jobs, how easy is it to get around, where are the access points to public transport, and what are the local residents like from a uh, from a from a societal point of view, and is there some sort of lifestyle and convenience? And when you look at some of the best real estate in Australia today, it's typically in that middle ring pocket of our major cities. And again, if you look at the house prices of real estate in those middle ring pockets of our major cities. They can be a little bit expensive. And uh, certainly if you can afford those houses, they're obviously a, a, a better typology and product type. But for a lot of Australians moving forward, they, they won't be able to initially grab that product range. So a good alternative is the terrace and townhouse space. So how do you buy a townhouse and ensure you're going to get growth and a result as an investor. Well, I think you need to consider what Paddington demonstrates to us because it is good evidence. It's evidence-based investment. And uh, evidence is, is really the key puzzle here. We were looking for something that proves the model works. And uh, really, the big drivers behind the concept of Paddington is well-being. It's just, again, got everything. So this is where we analyze the third place. And again, when I've chosen townhomes, I've always assessed the third place. Now, the first place in real estate is the home, the internals, the comfort of the property, the layout, and of course, we want a good first place. We want a nice townhome. The second place for a townhome is the backyard balcony courtyard, and you're obviously going to get a very, very small component, sometimes no courtyard, sometimes a uh, couple of balconies, sometimes a little courtyard. So you're going to get a very small second place. But the third place is what people buy townhomes for. And that is really what's a couple of hundred meters away or what's built into the communal uh, offering. Is it good green space, parks, beaches, shops? This is why people love living in townhomes. And uh, when I analyze the real estate, I've done very well out of using the concept that you buy a functional townhome in a good suburb, functional suburb, and you apply the third place to the model, I've always made money. So the third place is just, again, free space nearby. And uh, this is 
a key benefit to someone living in a smaller property. So evidence investing, we take a town or terrace home, the middle suburban area of functionality, and then the third place, and that equals profit. Now, when you uh, think about adding value to real estate, most people I talk to when I talk to them about adding value to real estate, usually the first thing springs to mind is renovation, um, which is a, is a way to add value to real estate, that is for sure. But so is buying on top of a park, a park that people love to use or across the road from coffee shops. That's a way to add value to real estate or on the back of a golf course. That's a way to add value to real estate. And so when I've applied the logic of making money out of townhomes and uh, effectively I own two and if I did the maths of the two I own, I'm up 1.75 million on two townhomes uh, and one's like literally, you know, I've only just taken the keys for. Um, so I think the asset class in some respects can perform very, very nicely if you get the ingredients right. Remember, evidence-based investing is just about what is the ingredients that have worked and can I apply it to my logic if I go and buy a townhome. So the asset to space ratio is really designed to help people understand if they are buying a townhome or a terrace home or an apartment, that space or land is not necessarily connected to the asset typology type. So you have to buy real estate if you are entering that typology next to public land. And so the asset to space ratio is the proportion of the overall dedicated public land near the asset and or the proportion of common land for the asset. And so the two townhomes that I bought, that I've made that money from, they had both great public land nearby that you could use as a backyard and also good common property land which you could use as a backyard. And so uh, the idea of having a smaller backyard, a courtyard to have a barbecue and have some dinner outside still happens in the second place. But if you want a game of cricket or you want to kick the footy or you want to take the dog uh, for a bit of a rumble down the park to fetch, you've got to go to the local park. But the local green space is within a 10-minute walk, sometimes just at the end of the street. Sometimes you're living on the park. And again, this is the add value component to the asset type. Now, you can do all sorts of research on living next to parks. If it's the right park, it drives up local property prices. That is for sure. And again, it's something that I've just helped a lot of my clients make money out of, that the third space is a key element if you're going to invest in the townhome genre. So the model is there. And again, if you think about who wants the third place, it's parents with kids, it's pet owners, it's health enthusiasts, it's families doing things, it's communities, and it's it's downsizers. It's just going for a walk. Going for a walk uh, is a big driver of property success. So the third place is the value add. And again, for simple terms, the model I've used, which I'm giving you the model, is an evidence-based investment model. You take a townhome or a terrace house, you apply it to uh, basically the middle ring 
which generally is about anything within the sort of 30 kilometer radius of the city. It's generally considered the middle ring these days of our major cities. Uh, and you apply a good functional third place nearby, and that equals profit. Remember, we want a good townhome, not a, a market lemon. We've got to think, okay, well, in Paddington, the evidence we're using in Sydney, the terrace homes are beautiful. So we want a beautiful terrace home. We're not going to get a Victorian one, but we can still look for a good functional townhome. We know that Paddington's got finite amount of supply, so we want a finite amount of supply on our townhome. Then we know that Paddington has Centennial Park, so we want nice parkland. We use evidence of other areas doing well, and uh, we can see that this concept can work. The driver is demand, not supply. And of course, it is driven by affordability, lifestyle, and demographic changes. And again, I think it's expected that more Australians will want the limited amount of terrace or townhouse stock in the affordable pockets of our big cities into the future. The maths, from what I see, is pointing to that product type because you take a new family forming, uh, people leaving the rental pool, uh, even people upgrading out of an apartment to f for that family formation stage, and you take the average maths of what Australians earn, they're going into and will find the terrace and townhome space very popular into the future. All right, folks, I hope that was helpful. I'll catch you on the next episode as we talk more real estate. Thanks for tuning in to the Urban Property Investor. To never miss an episode, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on your favorite app or on YouTube. And I would love it if you could give the show a rating and share it with your friends and family. In between episodes, you can always keep in touch with me by connecting on social media over Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Until we meet again on the next episode of the Urban Property Investor, take care and bye for now.